guys, it's Jenny. Alrighty, today we're gonna be working with the Renanthera Filipinensis. We are going to repot her. And today we're gonna use a special pot. Ta-da! The return of the Orchita pot. Now, I've always liked this pot, and about two years ago, this orchid was actually potted in that very same pot. Last year, I also kept this orchid potted. I didn't have issues with the medium and the top layer, but I did have a little bit of an issue with the actual clay pot. So what I decided to do is keep her as a Vanda. Problem is, as I was telling you in a previous video about the difference between Renantheras and Vandas, these guys like more moisture. So the issue now is that the Renanthera has a different watering schedule than my Vandas, which can get a little frustrating. Easily solvable with some more microfiber, but as you can see, I didn't even put microfiber because I knew I would repot her. So recently, since I've arranged a new shelf with light, I have more space on the direct sunshine shelf where this one will reside. I always wanted to return to the Orchid Top pot because many of you might not know this type of pot. I featured it two years ago I think or three. Anyway I'll share with you down below the video. It's gonna be easier to water rather than go into the bucket and as I was saying this banda did really well in the orchid top. I love the design actually. These pots are kind of expensive so I would not put all of my collection in them but I would definitely get a few for the renantheras for example or maybe other plants. So there we go we are returning to the orchid top pot and I'm really happy about it and also we're gonna be using inorganic medium as you will see this orchid already has some leca around her roots never bothered to remove them because they're inorganic, they do no harm. And without further ado, let us proceed. So this orchid actually is not potted, so it will not be very hard to remove her from this pot. The pot was actually used as a basket. Ta-da! Oh, the synthet got a lot of algae on it. So as I was saying, I do have a lot of leca on the roots. They actually grow on the leca. I never had issues with the desiccation of the root tips on this particular orchid. There are other orchids more sensitive that do this. Therefore, with this orchid, we will not use the pebble layer. We're just gonna use the inorganic and that's about it. Also, I will not be removing this basket it came with because it is plastic, it's inorganic, it really doesn't do any harm. Oh, looky here, we have some nice root tips growing. So I'm just gonna check right now for potential dead roots or dead root remains and all of that. I'm just gonna remove them. I don't need to spray this orchid with hydrogen peroxide or anything of the sorts. And pretty much everything should be okay. Look at this, she has pretty nice roots actually. Okay, so I've cleaned up the root system. One thing that I've noticed with Renantheras, just like Phalaenopsis, they can be quite misleading with their roots. So let's take for example this root. If you see it, you might think it's already dead, you would be tempted to cut it off, but actually it's just the velum that died off. The actual root inside is still alive. So from what appears to be a dead root, we can always have branches and growing tips and all of that. So whenever you have to cut a Renanthera root, just check the entire length for growing tips or branches that are still green. Chances are the root will actually survive. However, if you pull on it and the velum completely comes off, then the root is dead so you are safe to cut it. Another good thing about Renantheras is that if you mess up a root tip, it is very prone to branching out. However, a bad thing about Renantheras is that they create roots on the whole length of the axis, including way up above. So you might see a root, think it's a flower spike, and then no, just a root. So okay, the repotting using the Orchid Top Pot is just like a normal repotting. We're gonna add a layer of inorganic medium on the bottom, place the orchid inside and center it and add medium as we go. So let's just do that. And we're done. As I was saying, I will not add the pebble layer on the top since I never had issues with the top of the layer. My issues were with the clay pot. The roots would grow on the clay and then stop and then start again after a while. It was a little bit not ideal. This will not happen in the orchid top pot, obviously. The medium I went for is a combination of ceramics and leca and it's only the big chunks. Being that the orchid top pot has quite large slits, the use of the smaller ceramics or the smaller leca is not ideal because they would just come out through the ventilation slits. So I have big leca and also big ceramics. But of course the orchid top pots can be used with large bark chips and sphagnum moss and all of those things. Pretty much chunky medium in general. Now I did use something very similar to this about two years ago, but instead of the leca I had bark chips. 
Ceramis also produces a medium that consists of bark chips and the actual pieces of Ceramis. And I have to say, the period in which I kept this orchid like this was the best period of her life. Well, apart from being kept hung, but that was a little bit too frustrating. So at least with the Renantheras, keeping them potted actually works pretty, pretty great. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the sink and water this orchid very, very well. And I'm gonna come back and show you where her location will be. And there she is. This is where she will be residing from now on. In this location, she receives bright light in the first part of the day and in the second part of the day, actual direct sunshine, which Renantheras can definitely handle. I forgot to mention that the orchid top pot also comes with a tray. And if you lift the pot, actually, the tray stays with it. And it maintains the pot slightly raised above the tray. But semi-hydroponics can definitely be achieved in this as well because the tray is actually taller than the bottom edge of the pot. So you can obviously maintain a layer of water there and water it as if you would in a semi-hydroponic system. The way I will water it will be pretty much just like the other orchids from the top and I will see when the medium dries. That's a bonus. I can actually see when it dries. But if I want, I can leave water in the tray and of course it will suck it up because I have quite a bit of ceramics as well. And as for a little update on my Renanthera, she is doing quite well. She is recovering. The yellowing leaves that you see and of course the empty axis, they're due to spider mites. Last year she was severely attacked by spider mites. The only way I saved her was actually with the oily solution. The abomectin didn't work on her. And when leaves have a lot of spider mite damage, they are prone to actually being shed earlier than they should be. However, as you can see, the top leaves look in perfect condition. There are no more spider mites, so that's great. My only beef with this pretty little orchid is that it doesn't really want to bloom just yet. I'm not entirely sure if it's an age thing or how it was treated. It might be a mixture of everything. So my hopes are that it will decide to bloom soon because it should be a very pretty orchid. Now I actually do have two more orchid top pots, a big one, which is this one and a tinier one. And I was thinking to switch the pot of the big and great cum that one of you lovely people sent my way, Habib. Thank you so much for this monster. I love him. This guy yet again does very well in the clay. Uh, I think he does well in the clay pot as well. Problem is the clay pot is cracking open. My clay pots were really not good quality. So I do need to repot this guy and I was thinking the big orchid top pot would be a nice solution. I think it's gonna do great. I'm gonna reuse the medium. The ingrecum will have a lot of ventilation but also water. Ingrecums in my opinion just need more water than bandas. So I might just go ahead and repot him in the orchid top pot. Problem is the old pot you can see is taller. So I will have a few more roots in the air. That's not necessarily a problem with the ingrecums. And also I have these two aerial roots that are making their way downwards. So he will get hydrated. Problem is this guy is so incredibly heavy. And the orchid top pot is not light either. It is heavier than a normal plastic pot, being that I will use inorganic and probably I will put the pebbles on top just to add more weight to it. It might work. The only concern that I have at this point is that this guy will be too heavy for this top. But then again, the pot is wide and that makes it a lot more stable. So I am a little undecided. Would you guys like a repot? I think I'm gonna film it. I think it's gonna be funny. And I do wanna see how these roots are doing in the clay. My suspicion is they're doing great. So I think that is what I will do next with this orchid top pot. And also with the tiny one that I have there, which is dusty at the moment. I don't wanna use it just yet. I'm planning to replace my Renanthera Monachica. So I do wanna use that one for the future Renanthera. So yeah, let me know down below in the comments if you wanna see a repotting of this beautiful monster. I'll link you down below to my initial videos and presentation of the orchid top pots. I will also give you the links to where you can purchase them from Europe. I think you can find them at every big nursery. Orchid top pots have actually been around for quite a lot of years. And for the USA, I know that at least repotme.com has them for sale, so I'll link you to that down below as well. And if you want to give it a go, I think it's worth it. All you need to keep in mind is that it is very, very airy. It pretty much works with any type of medium, organic and inorganic. Things inside it can dry out faster than a plastic pot without ventilation holes but also when you're gonna repot from this pot it's gonna be a lot easier because these are not actually holes they're slits so you can just slide up the orchid it works great with Phalaenopsis I can tell you that hundred percent it works okay with Renantheras at least in some conditions with Vandas I would not attempt it still no Vandas in pots 
Callias should work great as well. And yeah, if you want to give it a go, I say you should give it a go with one. It is a product that I actually like. So alrighty, no more blabbing. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and plants videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video, particularly the hole that I just made because it's a vanda hole. Yet another reason for placing the Renanthera here. I need that space for the new vandas. Alrighty then, so I'll see you next time. Bye. And here is an example of an actually good and well-behaved orchid. You hear that jungle eyes? Yeah? You too, Jiminy Cricket? So please, take example, be nice little orchids for mommy and make some flowers already. <laughs>